This right here is one of the first prototypes of the Electric X Peak in the country. If it's any indicator of what's to come, I see a major new player in the fat tire e-bike market. Let me tell you all about it in this review. What's up fellow riders, Griffin Hales with EBR here, and today we're doing a deep dive into the Electric X Peak. Now, today's video is going to be a little different, as this is the first time we are putting a prototype through all of our standard testing, but with good reason. This could be one of the most interesting, off-road capable, full-size fat tire e-bikes to hit the market in quite some time, or at least at this affordable of a cost anyway. Now, the production model that's coming out soon will have some slight tweaks to it, and I'll make sure to shout those out as we go through it. Most of them are just gonna be cosmetic or slight frame length or angle changes here and there. We have the production model on the way, but honestly, we were so intrigued by what this bike could do and what it could become that we had to test it out now because it is a pretty sweet ride with only a handful of things we're looking forward to seeing cleaned up on the production model. The big claims to fame for the XP here are going to revolve around three different things the ruggedness and durability of the bike, the very impressive motor power, and the stunningly low cost for all that you get on a fatty that doesn't skimp on features. First off, Electric equipped the X-Peak with an RST Renegade suspension fork. That provides 80 millimeters of travel, but it's a better quality fork than many other fat tire e-bikes in that sub $2,000 category go with, and this one helped Electric achieve the ISO 4210-10 safety standard. That's typically reserved for EMTVs, this is the first bike in its class to get that standard. So in other words, the frame, fork, stem, and handlebars can take a serious beating, but you can expect them to hold up for the long haul. Most affordable fat tire e-bikes like to tout the off-road capabilities as much as the on-road, but that stamp of durability is going a step further than most, lending X-Peak riders a bit more confidence their ride can truly handle it all. Next up is Electric's rear hub motor. It is a 750 watt nominal, with a 1310 watt peak with their all new Stealth M24 tech, making it one of the quietest hub motors that can blast that kind of power. And this is all while riding on Electric's PWR system that provides better engagement than your standard cadence sensor. Finally, let's talk cost. The X-Peak is starting out at $12.99. Keep that in mind as we go through the rest of the specs because that's about as low of a price as you'll find among comparable 26 inch fat tire e-bikes. But this one has the advantage of that MTB durability that I mentioned before, plus a host of other goodies that aren't common or standard with that sort of low price. All right, so starting things off, the X-Peak comes in either a high step frame or the step through frame that you see here. The motor is fed off an integrated 672 watt hour battery that is UL2849 compliant. And the bike has a 24 amp controller. Now it can be ridden as either a class one, two or three e-bike but we kept our testing in class three speeds this time around. The drivetrain is a common Shimano Turn A7 speed with an 11 to 28 tooth cassette and a 46 tooth chain ring up front. This is Electric's first time doing a 26 inch tire and they are going with the 26 by four Chow Yang tires with hippo skin protection. And for added assurance, they put slime in the tubes for extra flat prevention. The fork and tires combine for solid comfort and handling off-road and on. You get some hydraulic disc brakes on 180 millimeter rotors with a headlight and taillight for safety to slow down and be seen. Okay, let's move up and take a look at the cockpit here, which is where I have most of my critiques on the X-Peak so far. But let's start with the good. The grips are a softer ergonomic rubber that I liked quite a bit. It's a 660 millimeter bar with a slight rise, which handled fairly well. Now on the right side, things are a little bit busy. You get the sideways push throttle, which I actually enjoyed a lot and gave me some ATV vibes, and you get a Shimano over the bar shifter. Now, I don't love over the bar shifters on something that is specced as an off-roader, but I'll go into more of that when we hit the ride quality section later on. On the left-hand side is the controller for adjusting your PAS level. Then in the center, there is the standard black and white electric display. It is nice and large, and like I say whenever I encounter it, I wish it had a percentage-based readout versus the bar-based one. So crossing my fingers that that changes down the line. Now, while not seen here on our test bike, Electric is offering early adopters a free kit of fenders, front and rear racks plus baskets, 
an upgraded headlight, and a folding lock, all included at no extra cost. So you just pay that $12.99 MSRP. As an added bonus, the XP will ship very easy to assemble thanks to the through axle. Out of the box, you'll just turn the handlebar, attach the tire without needing any tools, then you should be set to ride. It's pretty cool that they pulled that off, keeping the electric name in the category of some of the easiest to unbox and ride e-bikes. So that's the lowdown on all the parts, but well, let's dive into it and see how it performed in our tests. Our first test is to see how well the XP can stop. So as per usual, I brought the bike up to 20 miles per hour, hit the brakes, then measured the distance and took the average of three different attempts. The X-Peak was a touch on the long side on this test while still falling under the limit of what we'd call a safe stopping distance. The bike stopped on average in 24 feet and two inches for an okay result. Now for context, similar e-bikes we've tested are right now averaging around 21 feet, five inches. In terms of function though, it's everything we're hoping to see. They were responsive without feeling grabby, making my trips riding in the dirt feel safe. They helped control speed when I was zooming around town. So all in all, it's a solid result here on this test. I rode the X-Peak out on our speed testing course to see what max speeds you could hit in each of the different PAS levels. And to also get a sense of that PWR system's motor engagement. Let's go take a look at how it did. All right, so this is the class three speed test here on the electric X-Peak. Uh, right around when I'm able to pedal at about eight and a half miles per hour in third gear. Uh, weight of those big tires definitely makes it a little harder to pedal, but we'll see what difference the motor can make. So we can kick that into PAS one. So you can't really hear much of a difference, but you can definitely feel a difference like pretty quickly. Um, you can see that, that speed starts ramping up a bit. Uh, it's making it a lot easier to pedal. I'm gonna keep my pedal, uh, the pressure on the pedals roughly the same as like, we kind of like level up. But yeah, so far I'm able to go up to about 14.2 miles per hour without breaking a sweat at all. Let's go ahead and move into PDS2. The same thing, it's not very loud. I will give it to electric, they really have worked on the motor noise. Um, but it's, I mean, pushing forward effortlessly. Picking up speed here almost to 18.1 miles per hour, going into PAS3. And same thing, just, just keeps building, keeps climbing. Um, it's hard to describe really, it's almost, you can't feel it too much, but it's definitely like there. I mean, you can see that in the speed, but not a lot of noise. And it just kind of feels like it gradually keeps ramping you up and moving you forward, going 23.3 miles per hour here. Moving up into PAS4. So I'm now maxed out my gears. I'm in the seventh gear and still barely pushing on the pedals up to 25.9 miles per hour. And we'll finish things off all the way in PAS5. Gonna slow down a little bit here on this corner just to not have any surprises on the speed test, but from here we can open it up. Again, I'm really barely pushing the bike at all. The motor's doing basically all the work. Climbing up all the way back to 26.4, 26.5 miles per hour. 26.6. See if it does get to 28 as we kind of ride it out here a little bit through this section. It's still moving. I'm not doing anything different, but climbed all the way to 27.6 miles per hour, I think I saw. So overall, I mean, the X-Peak definitely has some giddy up and go in those last three settings. Okay, that may have been hard to follow while shouting out the results over the wind, so let's recap. Without any motor, I was casually pedaling around 8.6 miles per hour. There was clear improvement up to 14.3 miles per hour in PAS1. Then I hit 18.1, 23.3, 26.1, and 27.6 miles per hour in the remaining levels. That makes for a fairly nice distribution on a speed curve, while it is a little bit close on the PAS 4 and 5 result. I think the main thing here I appreciated was higher speeds without too fast of acceleration. I often find that bikes with good top speed levels maybe provide too much kick on the way there, but the PWR system does dish out a steady increase of power that'll help speedier riders hit the mark while assuring more casual cruisers can ease up on the pedal and dictate their more mellow pace. That's especially nice for a bike that splits duties on-road and off. No, this isn't as refined as a mid-drive motor with a torque sensor would be, 
but this does do the job better than most any cadence sensor engagement system you'll find. So overall, it's a nice ride with manageable speeds. So range can sometimes be a tricky thing for e-bike makers to nail. Make the battery huge and you increase weight, not to mention cost. Make it too small on a powerful motor and you can run the risk of not enough ride time. But electric typically balances all the different factors at play pretty well and they usually hit or exceed our estimates on the high power side and are within striking distance of their claims on the lower power side. For this range test, we tested the X-Peak again at class three speed one time in the max PAS5 setting and one at the low PAS1 setting. We saw distances of 15.14 miles on the max test and 34 miles even on the PAS1 test. Considering we were averaging nearly 23 miles per hour and 13 miles per hour respectively, I actually was satisfied with the results here, maybe hoping for just a little bit more on the high power one. So to be fair, according to Electric's testing, you can go between 20 and 55 miles when pedaling on class two settings. So when we retest the production model in a few weeks, we'll see how that claim stacks up. But again, the mileage of our class three test all in all is pretty good. A 672 watt hour battery I'd say is as low as you'll want to go on a fat tire e-bike. It doesn't hit the one-to-one -one ratio of nominal motor watts to battery watt hours that we typically hope for, but the PWR programming has proven to be more efficient than most setups we've tested in the past. So I think it's helping squeeze the most mileage possible out of the battery at those speeds. Bottom line, it's a solid result from the range department here on the X-Peak. Something about a big fat tire e-bike lends itself to expectations for powerful performance, doesn't it? Well, to prove its mettle, we took the X-Peak back to our test hill of hellhole to see how it can climb in throttle and on max pedal assist. All right, so we're on hellhole with electric X-Peak. And we're gonna do the throttle test and we're gonna have to pass this XC racer here in a second on throttle. So I'll let you listen to the motor right now. It's on your left. Good work, dude. I'm cheating, so. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. So anyways, um, so far it's been, the motor's been pretty good. So I'm on the throttle. The throttle is on the right side here, you'll notice. Um, but I haven't dipped below 10 miles per hour. And it's felt nice and smooth also surprisingly quiet like I can barely even hear this motor yeah there's just not much there at all that's pretty that's pretty impressive um, so we'll see through this last section here yeah I held right 10 miles per hour um, I'm first off definitely powerful second off kind of shocked at how quiet it is and really going to be curious to see how this does compared to the other fat tire e-bikes on throttle and then we decided to turn around and pedal it up um see if we can beat that xc racer twice probably not but um yeah throttle test definitely passed and well done on the electric x peak all right we are on take two with electric x peak doing the pedal test so so far that motor stayed nice and quiet Unfortunately, it didn't hit me coming around the corner. <laughs> didn't have to slow down really. So I kept right about 12 miles per hour is the lowest it's been. I'm in fifth gear. Um, I will say as I'm climbing, like it's a cadence sensor, but how they have tuned their motor, it does feel kind of on the very natural side of things for a cadence sensor. I'll let you listen to it through this, through this section here. So you hear a little bit more of the motor when I'm pedaling than the throttle, but that is still, it's got to be the quietest rear hub motor, especially on a fat tire bike that I've heard. And I think these results are going to be pretty good. I'm really not going to pedal hard, but it still feels fairly natural and just nice and smooth all the way up the hill. So let's see how it does. So this ended up being a pretty impressive result in terms of its time, the feel, and the noise, surprisingly. So on the throttle test, Justin made it to the top in a time of a minute and 26 seconds, good for a 13.6 mile per hour average. And then on the PAS result, he was able to shave off 10 seconds from that time for a 15.5 mile per hour average. So since we made Justin the full-time hill tester because we wanted to keep consistency on this test, 
This is his 140th officially recorded trial to go up hell hole for him. Of all those bikes, the X-Peak is the 24th fastest on throttle and 27th on pedal assist. So clearly this bike doesn't lack for speed while climbing. Now you may have caught his comments about the motor noise. I'll be honest, with hub motors, I've ridden a few hundred of them at this point and really only the exceptionally loud ones stand out in my mind. I've become pretty accustomed to hearing a low whirring sound whenever I ride a hub motor. But Electric did take feedback on their motor noise from customers, and they said this motor is now 400% less noisy than the similar one spec'd out on the cargo bike, the Electric Expedition. And that's been rather noticeable throughout testing. It is much, much quieter than we're used to. I think given that folks will be needing to climb up some steeper city streets and paths, and off-roading will encounter its fair share of loose inclines, I like all that Electric's been able to do with the motor setup, and think it stands out from several other fat tire e-bikes like it. So let's head back out for a couple of ride-alongs as we go over the ride quality, both on and off-roading. So if you are looking at getting an electric X-Peak for commuting, for riding around town, I mean, you're gonna get a very comfortable ride and that can definitely open up and get a little bit faster. I've got mine here in class three mode and it definitely gets up to speed without breaking a sweat. But again, the comfort is I think going to be what is key. Uh, obviously the RST fork is gonna provide a lot of that. But again, I just like the comfort, safety and security kind of, I just sort of come along with riding along on a four inch wide tire. If you're someone who hasn't ridden in a while, you're gonna find that kind of an attractive and appealing quality about fat tire e-bikes. It's just very well balanced, very comfortable, but you definitely have to make sure you have a motor with enough, uh, you know, push and power to offset the, the extra drag you get of those wide tires. But the, the motor here can definitely do that. It has no issue whatsoever. And then just riding, I mean, it feels really nice. It's kind of like floating around on the roads. Um, overall, I think it's gonna be very appealing to people who are just looking for a bike for getting around town, you know? Um, that's just not minimize its off-road qualities as, at all, as we'll uh, show you on the off-road riding footage here in a moment. But yeah, overall, the X-Peak, I think, is a very nice and comfortable ride. This step-through model, it's uh, the reach is a little bit shorter than I would like, so I think I'd probably be better off on the, uh, the high-step version. Uh, I didn't get a ton of time with that when we went to Electric's Media Day when we were first introduced to the bikes, um, but I could definitely tell it was a little bit longer in the reach. I think the handlebar may have been a little wider too. Um, so, you know, make sure where they have these kind of one size fits all across their high step and step three models. Just make sure you're getting the one that's going to be best for you in your situation. Um, but overall, I mean, the rest of the ride is nice. I mean, the grips are pretty good. Uh, pretty, you know. Fairly soft forever, got a good amount of grip. The shifters all work nicely. And I do actually, the more I've ridden it, appreciate this thumb throttle that you pull down to the side as opposed to keeping your thumb fully extended to push down. It just makes it feel like, you know, your thumb doesn't work as hard or get as tired over the long haul. But overall, I like the cushion, I like the power. And it's just, I think, a lot to find appealing about the electric X-Peak, especially uh, for one of the cheapest prices I've seen on a fat tire e-bike with similar specs and features. All right, let's take a look at how the fork and tires hold up when you're going down some loose, rocky descents. Check it out. It's kind of nice to just bulldoze and stumble your way across a lot of this. As you can see, I mean, Handles it all really well. Even as you finish in this looser dirt, you know, tires cling to the terrain nicely. At a speed you need to then, even after slowing down, pick it back up on the other side. That's pretty sweet bike. So I can't lie, I think the off road riding quality of the X Peak was a lot, <laughs> a lot better than I thought. I mean, uh, in our media day riding, they took us on a very intense, very rocky trail out in Arizona, but even like just the more time was spent on it, I mean, it handles a lot of punishment off-road. I mean, it really can just kind of hit and plow over things up and over on, um, and you know, keeping a lot of stability. Um, pretty impressive. I, I think that when it comes down to the overall ride, um, you know, my early returns, early impressions, are the only thing I, I'm never a huge fan of is again, this, this over the bar thumb shifter here on the right-hand side, just cause I don't like having to unwrap my thumb from the handle at any point when I'm off-road, if I can help it. But you know, it's also not the end of the world. The truth of the matter is for a lot of my off-road riding, I'll just pick my pedal assist level and pick what gear I'm gonna predominantly ride in. And I don't have to change or deviate from that too much. 
And when I do, I kind of pick my spots and do it in a more controlled uh, stretch of road. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, just overall, I mean, I think the fork's doing a pretty good job. It's a little on the softer side, and I already know that electric has mentioned they're gonna look to stiffen that up by about 25% for the production model. So I think that'll probably put it in a pretty good and happy place. And then I just think it's really cool. Again, like fat tire e-bikes like this, especially the ones under $2,000, they're kind of the, I don't want to say the dream machine or like oversell anything, but I mean, it's just, if you want something versatile, if you, if you know you're probably on the roads for most of the time, but you really want to go explore places like where we're riding around today, I mean, it's great for that. And I think the X-Peak with that extra enhanced durability of their EMTB um, rated setup here with that RST fork, I think it's going to be something that people do come and explore trails like this one, you know, check out a lot of those OHV spots because even when you come up on a rocky or descent or anything like that, you just hit it with a certain amount of confidence you wouldn't otherwise. In addition to those thoughts that I shared, I also wanted to cover some of the sizing details. Now the step through frame here will fit riders from five foot two up to six foot three and it has a 19 and a half inch step over height. Based off my six foot one size, I'd say I'm probably closer to the ideal max, and I'd suggest taller riders look at the step over frame, which will have a slightly longer reach and fit riders in the five seven to six foot four range a little bit better, so long as they are comfortable with the 30 and a half inch stand over height. Now with two different frame options to choose from and a high 330 pound payload capacity, most people will be able to ride an X-Peak just fine. But keep in mind, adjustability is a bit limited beyond raising or lowering the seat and moving the saddle back and forth. I hope down the line they give you color options between the two different models, as right now the step through frame locks you into a white color, while the high step gives you the gray. But I'm at least a fan of the styling and look on either option. Electric has been on a roll lately. They introduced their Expedition cargo bike that quickly became a top seller. They looked towards e-trikes and repeated that success with the XP trike. And let's not forget that the XP 3.0 might be the most sold e-bike in all of North America. Now they are entering the highly competitive world of 26 inch fat tires and they are showing up with a clear intent to wow and impress. And so far I would say they have. It's not just that it's fun while being cheap on your wallet, it's got some noticeable smoothness to it, a confidence backing EMTB rating, and it absolutely zooms on city streets and romps around our local deserts with ease. So far, my only two areas of critique on this prototype model here would be the fork needs to be a bit stiffer, and I'd prefer to maybe put the throttle on the left side with a rapid fire shifter on the right. I know for a fact Electric is going to improve the fork and stiffen that up, and in the meantime, the shifter throttle combo is hardly a deal breaker. Only time will tell if the X-Peak follows in line with the success of other Electric models, but given their formula for success by making it crazy affordable with some standout features and a high fun factor, I bet that it will attract a lot of buyers and I definitely think people will love their decision to pick one up. That's gonna do it for our review of the X-Peak. Was there anything I didn't get to in this review that you were hoping to see? If so, let me know in the comments below for when we review the production model here soon. But in the meantime, I'll leave links to the X-Peak in the video description where you can learn more. I'm Griffin with Electric Bike Report and I'll see you on the next review.